When you're presenting virtually like this, your mic setup is actually more important than your camera. How do I know? Because people will listen to podcasts, but they won't watch silent movies. So let's take a moment today and talk about how you can improve the way that you sound in your virtual presentations. Hi, I'm Joshua Seth, keynote speaker on presentation skills. And today I want to give you a quick tip on how you can sound your best when making virtual presentations. Right here, this is my microphone. I love it. I have five or six mics in the house. I mean, I was a voice actor. After all, I love microphones. So this is a subject that's near and dear to my heart. And the reason that I'm making this video today is I'm coaching a broadcaster right now who's doing a lot of direct hits from her home. And in other words, she is making appearances on news programs remotely. And when I first started working with her, believe it or not, she was she was doing this. Have you seen this where broadcasters and newscasters are dialing in from home and they've got this dangly headset coming out of their ears? It it reduces your credibility. It it looks silly and it's distracting. So get rid of those, okay? Then I actually first started working with her via text before we ever got on a call together and, and told her to lose those. And then the next time I see her on the news, she's wearing these. Okay, it's a little bit better. It's less distracting, but I still, I can't help but look at these headphones coming out of her ears. Please don't do that. Now, there will be people who will say, well, Joshua, you've got a microphone in the shot. Isn't that distracting? Yes and no. Okay. I get that. I understand. But if what you're going for is an emotional connection with your audience, then proximity matters. In fact, there are three points that I want to make today. One, proximity. Two, sound dampening. And three, quality microphone. So let's start with proximity. In order to get the best quality out of any microphone that you use in your virtual presentations, it needs to be close to your mouth. In a voiceover recording studio, we always do this. Basically, take your fist, stick your thumb out. That's about as far from the mic as it should be. Because of the type of mic that this is, I'm doing crosstalk. I'm not speaking directly into it. If I were speaking directly into it, you would hear pops and plosives, and I would need a windscreen or something that would get in the way of the visuals. But because I'm talking across it, that proximity of my mouth to the mic is such that we don't have to have a windscreen. But the most important thing that you need to remember is that the mic needs to be close to your mouth. Not right up on it, what's called eating the mic, but not, not like this either. You see, I, you hear the room tone. I'm far away. Where's the emotional connection? It's gone. So we bring it back right about there, mic proximity. Next, there's a window behind me here. That window is sound dampened because I have a big sound dampening blanket over the window. I've got a link down below. You can get them on Amazon, very inexpensive. I actually have it tacked up on the wall with thumbtacks. Windows will make your room tone feel very hollow and echoey, and it'll take the presence out of your voice and suck the connection out of you to your listener. So put some sound dampening on the windows. A blanket is a good way to do that. You can also use foam squares to dampen the sound on the walls and in the corners, but that's typically not really necessary and is a lot more complicated than just hanging a blanket. Also, make sure that the floor is carpeted. If the room in which you are recording has hardwood or tile, then get an area rug and put that down because of the way that waveforms bounce off of walls, corners, windows, and hard floors. That will make you sound terrible if the sound is not dampened, no matter how good a mic you've got. Now, let's get to the microphone itself. Worst option, the microphone on your computer. Better than nothing? Yes, but let's not use that if all possible. Better option, a wired lavalier mic. Why is it still in the box? Because when you use a wired mic, it can pull on you and again, be very distracting if you move around at all. So I don't use it. Even better option, the Blue Yeti. This baby, I've had for at least 10 years. I had, I got this Blue Yeti right when it came out. Mwah! It's like there's a reason that these are so popular. So why aren't I using it? Because in order for the Blue Yeti to work well, it needs to be close to your mouth. Yet, 
It's designed to sit on your desk. Now, I stand when I give my presentations. I'm using a standing desk right now, but the Blue Yeti microphone would be way too far away to make a good vocal impression. So only use the Blue Yeti mic if it's sitting right in front of your face, even if it's out of frame. Even better option, a wireless lavalier mic. By the way, what's a, a lavalier mic? Well, it's this is your lav, okay? Puts right there, the wire goes inside my pocket or clips onto my belt. This is actually the microphone that I bring with me when I'm doing keynote speeches live. This is a Shure wireless lavalier mic. And the only drawback to that for virtual presentations is this has an XLR connector, which means that I have to run it through a mixer. I have a physical Behringer XLR to USB mixer sitting on my desk right now. You don't have to worry about that. That's overkill for most people. But I use this when I'm doing virtual keynotes and presentations so that I can move around and use all the space in front of the camera. And that brings us to this baby right here. I love this mic. I've had mics that cost four, five, six times as much as this one. And I tell you, this sounds just as good, warm, rich and very forgiving. It's the MXL 990. I have a link for it again down below. If you want to have a great sounding mic that's going to be in the camera frame, I highly recommend this one. I've got it on a boom arm that's connected to my desk and it actually replaced a boom microphone that I had mounted above my camera and out of frame. Here's why I don't like those boom microphones for virtual presentations. They are very precise, very unforgiving. You have to be directly in front of that unidirectional boom microphone in order for it to pick you up well and work as well as it should. So unless you're sitting exactly still, a boom microphone may not work for you. I've tried several of them. Believe me, I would prefer not to have a microphone in the frame because it gets in the way between me and you. But remember, it's more important to sound well than it is to look good because the better you sound, the better you look. Because it's better to sound well than it is to look good. That's my Ricardo Montalbam. Boss, boss, the plane, the plane. Anybody remember that? Fantasy Island. Anywho, I've got links for all this equipment down below. If you have any questions, just put a comment down there as well. I will be happy to answer. The most important thing to remember is that when you are giving virtual presentations, your audience needs to be able to hear you and connect with you through the sound of your voice. So the better quality microphone, the more sound dampening you have, and the closer proximity you have to the mic, the more effective your presentation will be.